Hey guys, Greg here, Vinyl Rundown. Just hit 300 subscribers today. Thank you all for all your support. And uh, today I'm gonna do something a little strange. A magazine, yeah. Just got the May issue of Stereophile Magazine. And there's just two or three quick things in here I wanna show you. The most important one, which I'll get to in a second, is Don Was from Blue Note. That's kind of the most important thing I want to share with you guys real quick. But on the cover we have Kef, Kef speakers from England, Britannia, see the colors, red, white, blue, Kef's uh, LS, what's it called, LS50, I think it's the LS50, bigger version of this, this is the powered version, I think it's about a thousand bucks, uh, comes in designer colors. And uh, so anyway, let me jump to uh, the most important thing here. Don was producer, uh, bass player, now the president of Blue Note Records. My good buddy. No, just kidding. I met him once at a Thelonious Monk tribute concert, and uh, he let us take his picture. And uh, Blue Note is a constant uh, topic on, uh, on the vinyl community here on YouTube. And since the president of Blue Note is being interviewed here, I thought I would share just a couple of insights. By the way, I'm not trying to substitute for you to go out and buy this. Go ahead and buy this. If you're an audio geek or a record fan or a music fan, you should definitely go out and buy this. I've been subscribing to it for 20 plus years. Anyway, Blue Note, what's up with Blue Note? What's up with Don Was? A couple interesting things here, especially for you record buyers. Uh, a big topic on Blue Note is these fancy high-end uh, re-releases like Music Matters and Analog Productions uh, and people are spending 50, 60 bucks a disc on those super high-end uh, remasters of classic Blue Note records. Well, Don was got the idea that, hey, why don't we just do this ourselves in-house? Why do we have to just, you know, instead of licensing it and letting some other company earn the revenue, why don't we do it ourselves? Uh, hire the same guy, and that's Joe Harley. Joe Harley is kind of the brains and the uh, mix master behind uh, Music Matters Records. So he's gonna be working in-house with Don Was to do a series called the Tone Poet Series. So these are some sort of deep cuts from the Blue Note catalog. Uh, you know, everybody's seen, you know, John Coltrane, Blue Train, and all that stuff. Th these are some records that maybe you haven't heard of, uh, and some of Don Was's favorites. So, the first one, well, I don't want to get the order wrong. There might be two or three out by now. The couple that are mentioned in here that are coming out soon. Joe Henderson, saxophone player, uh, record called Mode for Joe, 1966. That's a real famous cover you've probably seen before. And uh, then it features Lee Morgan and Bobby Hutcherson on Vibes. Uh, that one sounds great. I mean, the idea of getting it sounds great. I haven't actually heard it yet. The other one that's real interesting is Sam Rivers. Sam Rivers is not really that well known to the casual jazz fan. He plays saxophone and flute, kind of associated with really avant-garde sound. Um, I actually saw Sam Rivers play before he died. He was a sideman with Dizzy Gillespie. I saw Dizzy Gillespie probably 1985, maybe, at UCLA Royce Hall. And I didn't know who Sam Rivers was. He just happened to be the, the guy on sax. But uh, Sam Rivers, mid-60s, certainly avant-garde, adventurous uh, music. Contours, that one I'm really interested in getting. So this whole concept of these high-end uh, super duper remasters uh, like I say they're usually going for 50 60 bucks music matters and analog production so Blue Note's doing them for only like 35 bucks cut out the middleman if you will buy them directly from Blue Note and you know it's not being licensed it's directly from Blue Note high quality vinyl high quality remastering so I'm really interested to get that and then another thing Blue Note's coming out with Volume 2 of the Blue Note Review Spirit and Time box set. Uh, Blue Note's doing these sort of collector item deluxe box sets with a bunch of goodies inside. Okay, this one is kind of all about 
drummer Tony Williams, and there's a record by Art Blakey and Bobby Hutcherson. Uh, Icing on the Cake is a pack of Blue Note trading cards. I want that. I want a pack of Blue Note trading cards. You know, Ace of Spades, John Coltrane, Three of Clubs, Thelonious Monk. I don't know. Art Blakey. Sounds cool. I would love to have that. Hint, hint. Birthday's coming up. My wife doesn't watch these videos, so maybe my son will tell her because he watches it occasionally. Uh, anyway, Don was the man with the signature hat, glasses, beard. Always looks like that. That's number one. That's the most important thing of this magazine. Go buy this just to see the interview with Don was. Then, the opposite end of the spectrum. I just thought this was interesting. I think this is the worst ad in the entire magazine. What's wrong with it? What is it? What are they selling? It looks like, okay, they're selling a, uh, a cartridge of some sort. Big deal. What does it say? DS Auto, f uh, TS Audio Phono Cartridges, pure analog. No laser, no digital, just a needle. So what, what's wrong with that, Greg? Why are you dissing these poor people from Japan? Well, the casual reader will not realize that this is the most innovative product in the entire magazine and maybe one of the most innovative products in audio in the last decade or two. That doesn't mean it's gonna sound good. That doesn't mean it's gonna sell well. And by the looks of their poor advertising, I don't think it will sell well. You gotta read the really fine print to see that this is a phono cartridge, a record player cartridge, that uses light to generate the signal. It's got a diode and a LED light source and somehow the needle moves it around and it vibrates, turns that vibrational energy into sound. I think that's really innovative, but the ad is horribly done. The ad, very Poor photography of three or four cartridges. You don't need three or four cartridges to prove that you got the world's greatest cartridge. So this this techie graphic and these four very bad photographs. Okay, most music engineer nerds, they make the same mistake over and over. They design a great product and they didn't bother hiring a professional. The guy might be a professional, but I'm sorry, it's weak photography. Weak layout, weak graphic design, pure analog. How about something about light, light rays, boom, light, lux, lumina. It's gray and black. I'm sorry, guys. I, I hope you're successful. I, I, I want to hear this thing. It sounds like a cool idea, but try hiring a uh, ad layout guy. Okay. Last thing, guys, real quick. You guys know about the show? The show. What is the show? The show stands for the home entertainment show. And I will be there. I plan on going June 7th, 8th, and 9th in Southern California. Uh, let's see. Where is it? doesn't even tell you. Long Beach. The Hilton in Long Beach. Long Beach, California, south of Los Angeles. I've been to this thing a half dozen times. Uh, love going. And kind of like this magazine, you think it's for audio geeks and audiophiles, but really it's also for music appreciators, music aficionados, record collectors. I bought a lot of cool records. Last couple times I was there, I bought my old, old 1950s Coltrane Blue Note for five bucks. That's right. I bought some of the Music Matters and uh, Analog Productions, really expensive, fancy jazz records. It's your chance to see all of the manufacturers, listen to all their gear, meet the people who design and created this stuff. I met, you know, a lot of the top uh, designers in the world. Andrew Jones, everybody knows from ELAC and Pioneer. Met him, chatted with him. Jeff Joseph of Joseph Audio. Sean Casey of Zoo Audio Speakers. Kevin Vokes of uh, Ravel. You just get to go to the hotel room. Uh, listen to the stuff, chat with the guys who made the stuff, invented it, uh, hobnob with other audio geeks. Uh, there's a lot of stuff for sale, records, 
equipment. Um, what else? There's a whole headphone headphone room. Um, anyway, there's there's live music. I've seen some good bands down there. Anyway, uh, if you guys are in Los Angeles in June, especially if you're on the vinyl community, uh, let me know if you're going to be stopping by down there. Right now, it's uh, middle of April. There's a big show going on in Chicago called Axpona. That is the worst name of any show ever. Axpona. That's Audio Expo of North America. But stupid name. The show is not not that much better because if you Google the show, what do you get? It's the home entertainment show. And it's not really home entertainment. It's Audio Geek High End Home Entertainment, which is not the same thing as... Uh, you know, television sets and Xboxes. Hi-Fi Luxury Audio File. It's like 20 bucks to get in and it's in a hotel so you can uh, buy a beer at the bar and walk around with it all day if you really want to. They'll give out some free goodies, free drinks, free food, uh, bring some money, buy some records. What else? Is that the entire issue of Stereophile? I think that's all I wanted to show you guys. Uh, I was kind of excited about the Don Was interview and uh, a couple other little items. I hope you guys are uh, subscribing to this or at least picking it up at the newsstand once in a while. Or their competitor, Audio, what's the other one called? I don't know, Audio Geek something. Guys, thanks again, 300 subscribers, and uh, thanks for watching. Let me know your comments, and maybe I'll see you at the audio show. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.